Ladies and gentlemen, a warm welcome to the 22nd Hong Kong Forum, co-organized by the Federation of Hong Kong Business Associations Worldwide and the Hong Kong Trade Development Council. Thank you for joining us online from all over the world. Without further ado, may I first invite Mr. Dennis Chu, Chairman of the Federation of Hong Kong Business Associations Worldwide, who is joining us from Singapore to deliver his welcome remarks. Mr. Chu, please. The Honorable Financial Secretary, Peter Margaret, Business Association's heads, fellows, members, ladies and gentlemen, a warm welcome to the 22nd edition of the Hong Kong Forum, the annual flagship event of the Federation of Hong Kong Business Association Worldwide, hosted by the Hong Kong Trade Development Council. Since its formation in 2000, the Federation of Hong Kong Business Associations Worldwide has spent no effort in promoting closer business links between Hong Kong and the world. And I'm proud to say the Federation is now representing 46 associations in 35 countries and regions around the world, with a strong network of around 11,000 members. Especially, we have the increasing number of young members of around 300 of them have joined the Young Executive Program in these two years. Though facing challenging times in the past two years, Hong Kong has stayed strong and intact, leveraging the city's strength in different business sectors. Businesses and professionals here can look forward to huge opportunities and good prospects, especially in the Guangdong, Hong Kong, Macau, Greater Bay Area. As the COVID-19 pandemic has shaped the global economy, as business landscape across industries, we are all facing a period of new normal. The Hong Kong Forum this year will fortify your confidence to weather the storm with insight and intelligence from industry experts and renowned entrepreneurs. In the course of the two days program of the Hong Kong Forum, you will gain a better understanding of the new lens economic landscape in Asia, especially opportunities in GBA and the business potential arising from innovation and technology. Finally, I would like to thank you for your tremendous support to the Federation of the Hong Kong Business Association worldwide in all these years. And most of all, a heartfelt thanks to all of you for joining the Hong Kong Forum. I hope you find it inspiring and useful for those who are yet a member of the Federation. You are most welcome to join this big Hong Kong family. Today, comes to an end of my term as the Federation Chairman. I'm grateful for my fellow members' support in the past three years, an honor to work with my great team, Hans, Michael, Alex, and colleagues in Hong Kong DTC that we have achieved together to strengthen the connection of the Federation of the Hong Kong Business Association's members, enhance inter-regional connection, and young members' engagement, even amid the, the pandemic challenges. I would also like to take the opportunity to congratulate the newly elected office holders. I have no doubt the new team will continue the momentum to drive new initiatives and together with Hong Kong BAs worldwide, provide a unified global voice for, for facilitating businesses investment opportunities in and through Hong Kong. Thank you once again for your unfailing support over the years, and I hope you will have a rewarding forum, and I wish you all every success in the years ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chu. Now, may I invite Ms. Margaret Fong, Executive Director of the Hong Kong Trade Development Council, to give her opening remarks. Ms. Fong, please. Financial Secretary, Dr. Lam, Dennis, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, 
Welcome to the 22nd Hong Kong Forum. I would like to thank Dennis, our Federation Chairman, for his hard work and leadership during the most challenging period that we have ever faced. Those of us who have worked with Dennis would know him for his dedication to this network and his generous support for younger members. As Dennis mentioned just now, despite the challenges in the past few years, the network continues to grow. In fact, I'm pleased to announce that we will be adding a new member association representing South Africa very soon. And as it grows, the network also continues to be greater than the sum of its parts. Therefore, it is important that we continue to strengthen it by sharing intelligence and insights and by exploring new and emerging opportunities. And therefore, I thank you all for participating in this year's forum. The COVID-19 pandemic has put limits on travel and normal business activities. These limits have not deterred us, however. If anything, they have encouraged us to do more to stay connected. Taking the 21st Hong Kong Forum last year as an example, it was a resounding success with us recording some 900 participants despite being held online for the first time. Since the last forum, we have been continuing to hone our skills in organizing online and hybrid events to connect businesses. In fact, we have just completed a series of seven hybrid fairs last month, which attracted 16,000 on-site buyers, over 20,000 online participants, and 1,700 exhibitors, and we delivered more than 3,000 business matching meetings. We have been doing the same with conferences, engaging high-level speakers and capturing wider audiences. Despite the challenges posed by travel restrictions, we launched a new event this year, the Asia Summit on Global Health, to foster global partnership in healthcare. Concluding last week, the inaugural summit brought together over 70 policy makers business leaders and innovators to discuss global trends in health innovation and investment and explore new business opportunities and partnerships. I'm happy to report that they were joined by 21,000 participants on site and online from 46 countries and regions. The last two years have been exceptionally challenging for Hong Kong businesses. However, crises also force us to be more focused on identifying new opportunities. Over the last half century, Hong Kong's business community has driven the evolution of the city from a trading port to a manufacturing hub to an international center of investment and trade. While it is easier to identify these transformations in hindsight, it is clear we are in the midst of one of the of one at this time. So the question for us now is, what is Hong Kong's next evolution and what should we focus on to be sure we are ready to capture the opportunities? At this year's forum, we will concentrate on three interrelated sources of opportunity, innovation, sustainability, and mainland China. Innovation and technology have become increasingly significant drivers of economic growth. The COVID-19 pandemic has demonstrated the importance of innovation, from communication technologies that help us to stay in touch without physically gathering, to the health tech and medtech innovations that have made us safer, not to mention the viable vaccines that were developed in record time. Hong Kong has unique strengths in R&D and technology commercialization, especially in fintech, biotech and health tech, smart city and AI. With a robust IP regime, world-class universities, continuous government support, a strong talent pool and a status as an international financial center, it has all the conditions to become Asia's innovation hub. 
The COVID-19 pandemic is showing us that innovation is the key to solving global challenges. But this pandemic is not the only global challenge we face. Sustainability will become an increasingly important priority for business in the post-pandemic era, and Hong Kong has opportunities to meet this demand, especially in the area of sustainable finance, but also infrastructure and related services. Our ESG compliance is of international standards, and many of our professional services have experience with global projects with green principles. Global brands are also increasingly committed to making their supply chains sustainable, which will create opportunities in the Greater Bay Area as a major global manufacturing hub. Innovation and sustainability opportunities overlap. And these are intersected again by another source of opportunities coming from China's national strategies. For example, Hong Kong's role as a green finance center is supported by the Guangdong Hong Kong Macau Greater Bay Area Development Plan. And with mainland China's commitment to be carbon neutral by 2060, there will be strong demand for sustainability-related innovations and services across multiple industries. And under the Greater Bay Area Development Plan, Hong Kong's capabilities in international finance, scientific research and technology commercialization will be integrated with the advanced and cost-effective manufacturing capacity of Guangdong to create a new global innovation powerhouse. Over the next two days, you will get more insight on these and other emerging trends and opportunities as well as the role that Hong Kong can play in facilitating your business development. To begin, I'm delighted and honored to have the Financial Secretary of the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region, the Honorable Mr. Paul Chan, as our guest of honor today. He will share with us the latest development of Hong Kong and the many opportunities locally and in the region awaiting businesses from around the world. There can be no better person to give you the pointers to what lies ahead. So ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming the Financial Secretary, Mr. Chan, please. Uh, Peter, Dennis, Margaret, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Welcome to the 2021 Hong Kong Forum, the annual flagship event of the Federation of Hong Kong Business Associations Worldwide. This year's forum, the 22nd edition, is again being held online. That, let me emphasize, does not make it any less real, any less essential. We may not all be in the same venue, but the intelligence, the insight, and the prospect you will gain over the course of this two-day international event will be invaluable to you and your business, as you, wake, as you would expect of an event that brings together Federation members from 46 business associations in 35 countries and regions on five continents. So let me, bring you, let me bring you up to date on Hong Kong and our plans for the future for you and your business. As we all know too well, the COVID-19 pandemic has for nearly two years now constructed, constricted our economies and our lives. Hong Kong is no exception. The good news is that the Hong Kong economy is back on track this year led by a noticeable revival in both global and local economic activities. Through the first three quarters of 2021, Hong Kong's real GDP expanded 7% year on year. Our latest GDP growth forecast for the whole year is 6.4%. I take particular satisfaction in the strong revival and resilience of our domestic demand. Through the first nine months of this year, 
local private consumption and overall investment expenditure grew by 5.5% and 12.8% respectively over a year earlier. The solid recovery path for local demand is largely a result of improved labour market conditions with the seasonally adjusted unemployment rate coming down to 4.3% in August to October, visibly lower than the height of 7.2% at the beginning of this year. The consumption scheme where eligible Hong Kong residents receive a total of $5,000 Hong Kong electronic voucher also plays a key role in stimulating consumption sentiment. Meanwhile, our goods trade reached a record high of nearly one trillion US dollar in the first nine months, surpassing our previous high by 13%. The remarkable resilience of our overall economy is reflected in Hong Kong's performance in international rankings and indexes. Worth naming an example of two here. In September, the Global Financial Center's index gave Hong Kong the third place, trailing only New York and London. In the same month, the Fraser Institute once again ranked Hong Kong the world's freest economy. That is a compelling affirmation of the city's long-standing commitment to a free economy and level playing field. Those and other international goodos speak of Hong Kong's significant advantages. You know them well. Our free and open economy, rule of law and independent judiciary, our highly internationalized business environment, and low and yet simple tax regime, which have long made Hong Kong an ideal city from which one could tap into the vast market of the mainland the Asia-Pacific, and beyond. That hasn't changed, and neither has the world's interest in Hong Kong. Indeed, the number of mainland and overseas companies based here reached a record high in recent years. Over 9,000 inter international and mainland companies now maintain an office in Hong Kong. That, by the way, is a full 10% up compared to that number in 2017. Growth in the number of startups based in Hong Kong is no less encouraging. The latest tally stands at over 3,700 startups in the city, up 69% when compared to 2017. Central to this renewed confidence in Hong Kong was the enactment of the National Security Act last year. It has returned stability to our economy and our community. Hong Kong, ladies and gentlemen, is your prime partner in exploring benefits arising from the continuing development of the mainland and its deepening integration with the Asia region. And now there are even more reasons to look to Hong Kong for your future. The National 14 Five-Year Plan, the agenda for mainland social and economic development over the next five years, backs Hong Kong's plan to enhance its strengths in international finance, transport and trading, as well as legal and dispute resolution services. Let me focus on finance for now. With the support of the five-year plan, Hong Kong is committed to flourishing as an international financial center by way of strengthening our position as a global offshore renminbi business hub, an international asset management center, and a risk management center. Just last month, the Shenzhen Municipal People's Government issued 5 billion renminbi of offshore renminbi government bonds in Hong Kong, making it the first time a mainland municipal government had issued bonds anywhere outside 
the mainland. And over the past two months, the long-awaited southbound trading under the Bond Connect and the Greater Bay Area Cost Boundary Wealth Management Connect scheme were both introduced. These are game changers, enabling cross-border investment in bonds and wealth management products. There has also been a lot going on with our asset and wealth management business. Recent initiatives include the introduction of a limited partnership regime and the exemption of carry interest payable by hedge funds, private equity funds operating here. In less than a year's time, about 350 such funds have set up in Hong Kong. We see opportunity in family offices as well, thanks to the growing number of ultra-high net worth individuals in Asia. Apart from setting up a dedicated team offering one-stop services, we are also reviewing our tax arrangements with a view to promoting Hong Kong as a family office hub. Without going into details, I should also mention our continuing efforts in developing Hong Kong into a green and sustainable finance hub. Not least, the successful offering of 37.5 billion US dollar worth of green bonds denominated in US dollar, euro, and renminbi. Meanwhile, we are also actively, prepare, actively preparing for the issuance of retail green bonds that the, the public can participate in. Green bonds aside, we have been promoting green finance on the regulatory fund as well. We are also strengthening our green finance infrastructure. Now, the five-year plan also supports Hong Kong's development in four emerging sectors, innovation and technology, aviation, intellectual property, and culture. Specifically on culture, our aspiration to rise as East, uh, East Midwest Center for International Cultural Exchange. Nothing brings that letter ambition to reassuring life more vividly than the grand opening on November 11th, the M Plus Museum, Hong Kong's brand new museum for visual arts. At 700,000 square feet and home to around 8,000 creative works, it is among the largest contemporary arts museum in the world, almost twice the size of London's Tay Modern. Arts development in Hong Kong also presents unlimited business opportunities. Last year, Hong Kong was the second largest art trading center in the world, behind just New York. Then there is innovation and technology, one of our government's key priorities. You will hear more about INT in the next session, a spotlight on business opportunities in innovation and sustainability. But allow me for a moment to talk about what Hong Kong SAR government is doing to spearhead INT progress and opportunities in Hong Kong. One of the most significant initiatives would be the development of the Northern Metropolis, an urban rural mega development recently announced, encompassing 300 square kilometers along the Hong Kong Shenzhen boundary. This area will rise as the farthest beating heart of innovation and technology in Hong Kong and will soon be home to 2.5 million people and 650,000 jobs, including 150,000 in the INT sector. And within the metropolis, we will see the creation of a new technopole incorporating the Hong Kong Shenzhen Innovation and Technology Park and surrounding areas, creating about 240 hectares for R&D and advanced manufacturing. 
the development will also include an Inno Life health, health tech hub. To put that into perspective, 240 hectares is almost the equivalent of the three existing industrial estates in Hong Kong. The impact of the northern metropolis will be far-reaching, enabling our integration with Shenzhen and seamless connection with the Greater Bay Area, one of the fastest growing region, one of the fastest growing regional economies in the mainland and the world. The cluster city development of nine cities in the Guangdong province, together with Hong Kong and Macau, boasts a population of 86 million people, a combined GDP of about 1.7 trillion US dollar, equivalent to a per capita GDP of US $20,000. Soon enough, ladies and gentlemen, those 86 million consumers will become Hong Kong's domestic market. That is the kind of inflation that I'm sure we will be happy to live with. In the coming five years, the mainland will pursue sustainability, quality economic development, driven by reform and innovation. And Hong Kong, thanks to our deepening economic integration with the mainland, will play an ever-growing role in our country's development and the Greater Bay Area will present extraordinary opportunity for Hong Kong and the business and companies that work with us. For more on that, you will want to watch tomorrow afternoon's session on the GBA and opportunities through the mainland's zero, currency, zero circulation strategy. We explore opportunity beyond the mainland and the GBA that opportunity doesn't get much bigger than the ASEAN region. ASEAN has been our second largest trading partner for the past 10 years in a row. And the free trade agreement and investment agreement between Hong Kong and the 10 member states of ASEAN, which enter into force in February, will boost our trade in goods and our mutual investments. There is more on the cards. Hong Kong is now actively striving for an early accession to Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, or RCEP, the largest FTA in the world. It will enter into force for 10 of its 15 member states on 1st of January next year, just a little over four weeks from now. RCEP embraces the 10 ASEAN members and five ASEAN FTA partners, covering about one-third of the world's GDP and 30% of the global population. The partnership's open, inclusive, and rule-based trade and investment philosophy is in accordance with Hong Kong's own values. And given our strategic position in the heart of the region, and our deep ties with the economies of the partnership, we have much to contribute to ASEP. That would include connecting companies and investments from ASEAN member states with those from the GBA and vice versa. I hope you all agree that the future looks promising for Hong Kong and for you, our much treasured partners. Together, we build business together we also create lifelong connections, spending a world of companies, communities, and peoples. My thanks to the Federation of the Hong Kong Trade Development Council for organizing this year's forum. I wish you all a rewarding two days at the Hong Kong Forum and the best of health and business in the coming year. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chen. Please be seated. We now come to the Q&A section. Please feel free to submit your questions via the Q&A box. May I invite Ms. Margaret Fong, Executive Director of the Hong Kong Trade Development Council, to moderate the Q&A section for us. Ms. Fong, please. 
Financial Secretary, thank you very much for a very uplifting uh, speech. I think we are now all very excited about the many opportunities that are awaiting not just local but international companies who are wanting to do it via Hong Kong. One of the first questions uh, that I have already received is about, as you would expect it, border reopening, because many of them, of course, are eager to come to Hong Kong to work with partners and then perhaps through Hong Kong to go into whether it is the GBA or onto the ASEAN. But at the moment, uh, with quite a number of regional uh, economies opening up, how do you think that may impact Hong Kong's unique role as an international business and investment hub? Yeah, thank you, Margaret. Well, Hong Kong is an international financial center and we are a small and open economy. So it is imperative for us to be able to remain open to tourists and business travelers. Uh, the COVID-19 virus is very cunning, as witnessed in recent days. The outbreak of uh, the new virus, new variant of virus uh, from Africa. The immediate priority of the Hong Kong SAR government is to restart, resume the traveling between Hong Kong and the mainland. Uh, this is uh, important for the people because of the close uh, family ties. It is also important for business because we have been told that a lot of business basing their operations in Hong Kong are in fact uh, eyeing on the easy traveling between Hong Kong and GBA and the mainland. So the ability to resume the traveling between Hong Kong and mainland become immediately uh, priority. But we are also conscious of the fact that we must be able to open to international travelers. As you know, uh, we are doing very hard to try to boost up the vaccination rate. At the moment, it's about 70%. We would naturally want to see higher. Uh, we are also monitoring uh, the international situation uh, in terms of drug development as well as the COVID situation outside of Hong Kong. Uh, let me assure you that this opening of border is on the top of our policy agenda. Uh, we are working very hard to achieve that. But at the moment, do bear with us. The short-term priority is to reopen with the mainland first. Thank you, Aves. Uh, I'm sure we are all eagerly uh, awaiting the reopening of the, of the boundary with uh, mainland China. Uh, you mentioned just now there are many opportunities, especially in the innovation-related sector, and of course Hong Kong's new role of uh, IP regional IP trading hub, and so on. Can you tell us a little bit more about what are the opportunities, especially for international businesses that can work with Hong Kong on these opportunities? Uh, innovation and technology is a key priority for the Hong Kong SAR government. This is also very important for the mainland government uh, because in the five-year plan, the 14 five-year plan, innovation and technology is the key driving force for their quality economic development. When we look at Hong Kong, we have certain strengths. We have strength in terms of research capabilities in our universities in terms of our legal protection for intellectual property rights uh, and also guarantee under the basic law the free flow of information, uh, capital as well as traveling. This is our competitive advantage vis-a-vis -vis cities in the other part of the mainland. But on the mainland, they, have, they are very strong in terms of uh, commercialization of the products, mass manufacturing. So. In this respect, our vision is to turn Hong Kong into, into a hub, innovation and technology, focusing on research, but not just basic research, but also applied research, translational research. And then we will be able to keep the intellectual property right here. 
the as to manufacturing, perhaps from zero to ten, will be kept in Hong Kong. For certain advanced manufacturings uh, like microelectronics, that can be uh, uh, manufactured here. But for some others which require more extensive use of land or human resources, let's have that kind of production across the border. So the idea is to work with our neighboring cities to leverage on our respective strengths to achieve the synergy. So we welcome uh, foreign business, foreign research institutions to come to Hong Kong to work with us. In fact, I have allocated more than 10 billion Hong Kong dollars to the Hong Kong Science Park to create research clusters on AI, on, uh, bio, on robotics, also on health and biomedicine. We have attracted about 28 uh, leading research institutes and universities coming here to work with us. Um, they come to work with us, they can bring their talents. Uh, we, also allow, uh, we also allow importation of talents that we are lacking so as to create a vibrant research ecosystem here and keep the intellectual property here. And by doing that, we will be able to capture the higher value at the part of the entire innovation and technology chain. Thank you, Evis. Which brings me to the next question, which uh, quite a number of people are interested in. You've mentioned the synergy uh, mm. that we can have with the Greater Bay Area. Uh. And uh, you've also mentioned the very exciting new initiative of the Cross-Boundary Wealth Management Connect mm. uh, scheme. And, and of course, in biomedicine, we also have uh, the, the medical equipment and also drug mm. scheme, which will allow uh, drugs used in Hong Kong, uh, public hospitals, to be used in designated uh, facilities in GBA. Do you see more of these com these um, initiatives coming up, which can benefit not just the local community, but also international communities who may want to set up in Hong Kong and then access the mainland market? Uh, the Wealth Management Connect is one good example. Uh, we have seen foreign banks expanding their operations in Hong Kong to capture that opportunities. In fact, according to some research, uh, the middle class people on the mainland on average spend about 27% of their earnings in financial investments and insurance. That presents tremendous opportunities for, for banks. And on innovation and technology, one interesting point to note is, say for example, for, for drug companies, if they want to develop drugs, for use in this vast 1.4 billion uh, Chinese market. They can come to Hong Kong because now we have arrangement uh, with the central government to allow uh, data, bio uh, of the Chinese to be used for research in Hong Kong in designated areas. So with those informations, with those information, actually drug companies stand do the research and tailor-made products spe specifically for this market, which is huge. So that is another, another example. So going forward, we do think uh, on innovation and technology, on financial services, there are huge opportunities for foreign business. And one more point is about the, uh, the development strategy of the mainland in the 14 five-year plan, which is the dual circulation uh, strategy. Since on the mainland, the, the number of middle class people is growing very fast. It is estimated uh, to be grow from about currently 400 million people to 800 million people by 2035 with huge purchasing power. So for foreign business, good quality products would be able to, to be export onto the mainland. In fact, they have organized import exhibitions uh, promoting domestic consumption as a driver of their own economic growth. So that is one dimension. The other dimension is that uh, the ex external circulation, the mainland is encouraging two-way open up. Apart from foreign business investing into the mainland, going into China to do business, 
they encourage mainland business to go global. So in that respect, I think uh, there are opportunities for foreign business to partner with uh, mainland business to explore both the domestic market and international market. And Hong Kong, naturally, will be able to, to be the uh, super connector in this connection. Yeah. Thank you, Evis. There's a, a question that, that I've received from the floor, and it's very specific. Yeah. Um, you mentioned in your speech that there will be a 6.4% increase in the GDP. Yes. They're very interested as to what is actually driving this 6.4%. Is it from investment, manufacturing, and then so on and so forth? Um, for We have three economic engines. One is trade. The other is domestic consumption. The third one is domestic investment. For this year, 2021, the major driver of our economic growth, particularly in the first half of the year till now, is trade. Uh, one trillion for a small open economy like Hong Kong, I think we, are, we rank well number six. Uh, first nine months, the trade volume is one trillion US dollar, gone up by nearly 20%. And the second one is the domestic consumption. Uh, people will be amazed the the, the wealth uh, in 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 the community. Uh, actually, since May, uh, when the pandemic situation is under control, uh, plus the rolling out of the ed economic consumption vouchers, uh, the domestic uh, sentiment has been very positive, and we see uh, domestic consumptions going very fast. Therefore, unemployment rate come down very quickly. Yeah. Excellent. Well, I've just been told that time is up, but uh, let me here thank the financial yeah, secretary thanks. again for, for coming and talking to us. I think we are all very encouraged by the pr very promising outlook that you have set out in front of us. And there are many opportunities, as you point out, not just in mainland China, but also in ASEAN and RCEP overall. So thank you, financial yeah, secretary, you, for joining yeah, thank us. Thank you for having me me wish you all the best of business and health thank you yeah, thank you ladies and gentlemen here comes to the end of the keynote section thank you very much for joining us